What's good, math family? In today's video, we're going to look at the geometry EOC and common problems you'll see on this exam. In problem number one, it says that CD is the altitude to the hypotenuse of triangle ABC, and they're asking us to identify what is AC. So we're solving for X, and the best way to do this is to draw a diagram because there's about three different triangles, and this is probably the best way to solve this. So when we look at the smallest triangle, right, which is this one right here. What we have, and let's put the right angle too, is four for the short leg, x for the hypotenuse. Then we go over to the larger triangle, or the second largest triangle, and we notice that all we have is just the long leg of nine. And then the last triangle, which is kind of like the whole entire triangle, right? Because there's three of them. What we're gonna have now, let's draw this out, is we're going to have x for the short side, and we know that the hypotenuse is 4 plus 9, which is 13. When we look at this, we now understand that we have corresponding parts of triangles, and when we have corresponding parts, we're able to solve by creating proportions. So we know 4 lines up with x, and the hypotenuse of x lines up with 13. So when I create my proportion, we'll have 4 over x is equal to x over 13 and then we just cross multiply. So when we cross multiply we'll have x squared is equal to 52. And now when we try to figure out what that side is, we're not going to break the radical down of radical 52. And the largest perfect square that goes into this is going to be 4. So when I break this down, this will be the square root of 4 times the square root of 13. And once I simplify and take out my perfect square, our answer would be 2 radical 13, which would be C. The reason I kept it as a radical was because if there are any whole numbers, it's easier for us to see it. On a geometry EOC, you're always going to see parallel lines cut by transversals. So they tell us that angle 2 is equal to 2x plus 7, and that angle 7 is equal to 3x minus 13, and they want us to figure out what is the measure of angle 7. So when we look at both of these angles, we should know that they are equal because they are alternate exterior angles. They have the same exact measure. So for us to solve, we could create an equation where we set both of these equations equal to each other. So we have 2x plus 7, and that is equal to 3x minus 13, all right? And we just solve like a regular equation. So after I subtract 2x, we have 7 is equal to x minus 13. And then we'll just add 13 on the other side so that x is by itself. So now we know that 20 is equal to x. So the, the reason why this sometimes becomes challenging is because students will get this answer and then go ahead and circle A as the correct answer. But family, remember, they didn't ask us for X, they asked us for the angle measure. Okay, so what we need to do is plug it back into angle 7. So 3 times X, which is 20, minus 13. So we have 60 minus 13. And as a result, this is what's going to be our final answer which would be 47. So we know that angle measure for angle 7 is going to be 47 degrees, and angle 2, because they're the same, will also be 47 degrees. We can use either or of these equations to figure out the angle measure. In this next example, there are two important pieces of information. The first one is that angle 1 and 2 are supplementary, right? So we know once we add angle 1, and angle 2, this is going to give us 180 degrees. Then we know that angle 1 and 3 are the same, right? They're congruent because they are vertical angles. So angle 1, I'm just going to put is congruent to angle 3. They're the same exact thing. So now when they ask us the question, what must be true about angle 2 and 3, let's look at it. They said nothing where answer choice A could be correct. We don't know if angle 2 and 3 are the same. All it said was that angle 1 and 3 are the same because of vertical angles. And we could probably say the same thing about angles 2 and 4. 
but not two and three. So A is gone. Answer choice B, it says angle two is complementary to angle three. Well, without any angle measurements, we can't make that assumption either, right? We don't have enough information. But when we go over to answer choice C, that is very interesting because if angle one plus angle two is equal to 180, and then we know that angle one and three are the same, then wouldn't angle three plus angle two also be supplementary? Exactly. So the answer choice should be C because it's the same equation. It's the same angle. Angle one and three are the same. So if we add either or of those angles to angle two, then it will be supplementary. We know it can't be D because there's nothing or no piece of information that allows us to make the assumption that there are right angles in this problem. In this problem, we're dealing with proofs, and you're always going to see this on a geometry EOC family. What they tell us is that a line AD is parallel to line EC and that AD is congruent to EC. So that's given. So when we look at our answer choices, we probably could eliminate answer choice A and answer choice D because these proofs normally start off with given and that is the third, you know, that's the third reason. Now, when we look at answer choice B and C, the next reason they give us is that angle ABD and angle EBC are congruent because there are vertical angles. So we're talking about these angles right here, right? These two angles are the same because of that vertical vertical angles. So let's just put that, let's abbreviate that, vertical angles. Then we go over to the next answer choice, which tells us that what? Angle DAB and angle ECB are the same, right? And this, this is true because of what? Like they tell us that alternate interior angles theorem. So we're talking about this angle up here that you see me making in green and the bottom angle that you also see me making in green. So those are alternate interior angles. So we could put that next reason, right? Alternate interior angles. Now the question comes down to this. What is actually going to be next? Is it going to be the angle angle side theorem or are we going to talk about the congruent parts of a congruent triangle are congruent? So what I'll tell you guys and my hint is typically before we could say that, you know, corresponding parts of a triangle are congruent, we need to have that congruence theorem, angle, angle, side, side, angle, side, those type of things, right? And when we look at triangle ABD, what do we notice, right? We have angle, angle, and then side. So that does prove true for this triangle. So if it was me, right? The correct answer choice should be B because after we go in and we select that angle angle side theorem, we could then now say that corresponding parts of a congruent triangle are congruent. So just look out for these type of problems. And the hint, like I said, typically those congruent theorems are going to come first before you actually say whether the triangles are congruent or not. So in this example, what they want us to do is find the area of the shaded region. And we're going to have to find a difference for the area of a circle with a radius of three inches and a radius of six inches. And the formula we're going to use is area is equal to pi times r squared. So when I look at the smaller circle, right, and we substitute, we know area is equal to pi times radius squared. So we know area is equal to 9 pi. And in this problem, we could multiply by pi now or we could do it at the end. We're going to get the same answer. OK, so I just want you guys to know that I'm going to leave, leave it to the end. Then when we go over to the larger circle, we know area is equal to pi times radius squared. We know the radius is 6. So when I simplify this, area is equal to 36 pi. Now, for us to get the correct answer, we're going to have to subtract the difference in areas from the larger circle and the smaller circle. So we have 36 pi minus 9 pi, which gives us 27 pi. Now, yes, this answer is not on our screen, uh, is not one of the answer choices yet, math family, 
we're going to have to take 27 and now multiply it by 3.14. And once we multiply, right, we're going to get an answer of 84.78 inches squared. So our correct answer choice should be C. And like I said, you can multiply by pi at the end, or you could do nine pi time, nine times pi. And in 36 times pi and subtract, you will get the same answer. And now we're on to the next example. So you're always going to see problems on special right triangles. And if you remember the side relationships, this is going to make these type of problems 100 times easier. And if you don't, I'm going to show you guys how to solve. So just remember, when we're talking about um, special right triangles, right? A square, once we cut it in half, this turns into a 45 45 90 triangle so what does that mean that means when we look at the side relationships we have x times x for the legs and our hypotenuse is x times radical 2 so if my perimeter is 36 all right and we divide 36 by those four sides that means every side is going to be 9 and if i'm looking at the hypotenuse now i just take 9 and i multiply by radical 2 which will just be 9 radical 2, which will give me D. Now, let's say for some reason you, you, you could not remember that special 45, 45, 90, you know, triangle relationship. We could use Pythagorean theorem, right? So we could come in here and say 81. Oops, not 81. My bad, family. I'm moving too fast. 9 squared plus 9 squared is equal to C squared. So we have 81 plus 81 is equal to C squared. When we simplify, this is 162 is equal to C squared. I take the square root of both sides, right? So I know 162, radical 162 is equal to C. Once I break this down, this would be the square root of 81 times 2, which is equal to C. Once I simplify, I should have 9 radical 2 is equal to C. So you can use Pythagorean theorem in this problem if you get a little confused on those special right triangle relationships and you don't remember the side lengths. So we're dealing with another proof. And what's given is that angle two and angle three are congruent. And they want us to prove that angle one and angle four are congruent. So off rip, we should know that this answer choice is going to be B, vertical angles. And the reason why is, think about it like this, right? If angle two is the same thing as angle three, right? That means that the angle across from angle three is also going to be the same. And we could say the same thing for angle one. It's also going to be the same thing as angle two. And we can make that connection of vertical angles because we know that vertical angles are congruent and therefore angle one and four are congruent because there are vertical angles to two and three, meaning they are the same angle. So it gives the equation of a circle and they want us to match it with the graph. So first thing, standard equation for a circle is x minus h squared plus y minus k squared is equal to r squared. And we know hk represents the center of the circle. So when we look at this equation, this, the center of our circle is going to be at negative 2, negative 3. That's the first thing I'm going to check for. So in answer choice A, this is incorrect because that's not the correct center of the circle. Same thing with answer choice B. When I go down to answer choice C, I notice that the center of the circle is at negative 4, negative 3. So this is incorrect. So we know that our answer choice probably has to be D, but let's just check. So we know the center of the circle is at negative 2, negative 3. And then when we check the radius, right, if R is equal to 4, that means the radius has to be 2 because 2 squared gives us 4. So when I now check from the radius, meaning the center of the circle to the edge, it should be 2, which it is. So just please remember center of the circle, radius, that is how you're going to find the equation. And we're going to go on to our next example. So it tells us that the arrow above represents a needle on a compass. And what they want us to know is if the 
needle is rotated 180 degrees clockwise, what are the coordinates of point A in the rotation? So we're talking about our rotation rules and we know that this is going to be somewhere on this side, whether we go this way or this way. 180 is a special rotation because whether we go clockwise or counterclockwise, we still are going to end up at the same place. And once we remember those rotation rules, right? So we have a 180 rotation. We have X, Y. What happens to those coordinates? Well, what happens is they both, both of their signs change. So now we know this point is now going to be somewhere over here where you see my green point. And we should know that our answer is C based on those rotation rules. This is a lot easier compared to the 90 and 270 counterclockwise and clockwise rotations. Just remember this for 180. I think it's the easiest rotation to remember. If you found this video helpful, smash the like button for us. Really helps out our channel. So it says that MNOP is an isosceles trapezoid and that M and OR is a parallelogram. So what we should know just from that information is that these two sides are the same, meaning that our angles are also gonna be the same. So this angle and this angle are the same, as well as this angle and this angle. And what they tell us is that angle MPR is 62 degrees, and we're trying to find angle R, and the P, which is right here. So the first thing we want to do is focus on that 62 because we know that angle plus the next one is a linear pair, meaning it equals 180 degrees. So once I do 180 minus 62, I get 100, oops, and 18 degrees. So this angle right here is 118, and this angle right here is also 118 degrees. Now, because this is a parallelogram, we know that opposite angles are equal. But before we get there, right, because we're focusing on that angle next to M, right? Before we get there, we notice that if we add 118 and that base angle where M is, that is also going to be 180 degrees because, you know, when we talk about trapezoids, consecutive angles are supplementary. So off rip, once I do 180 again minus 118 I know this angle right here is 62 degrees because when I add it to 118 like I said they're supplementary and this other base angle is 62 degrees now remember parallelograms opposite angles are equal so if this is 62 degrees by n that means where r is this is also 62 degrees so there's two ways we could solve this we could say that 118 minus 62 is equal to x. Because remember, these angles opposite of each other, m and o, they should be the same, right? Because opposite angles are congruent in a, in a parallelogram. So once I do that and I subtract, I know that 56 is going to be equal to x. So my answer choice would be a. Or if I focus on the triangle and I do 180 minus 62 and then subtract 62 again, I would get the same exact answer. So there's two different ways to solve the same problem. And we really hope that this EOC review was helpful for you, math family. If it was, smash the like button, subscribe to the channel, and leave comments down below if you have questions on this video or if there's videos you'd like to see on our channel in the future. Thank you guys so much for joining Algebra 1 with Mr. Peters.